this. And President Zelensky gave a speech today. It was a very strong speech. And what he talked about is that there's chaos in Russia, that the Russian government can't be trusted not to create chaos. He talked about the fact that Putin uh, is most scared about the hate and violence that he himself unleashed in Russia, and he can't control it. It's boomeranging back at him. For those who are keeping track, it might be confusing because in the last 36 hours, we saw Prigozhin and the Wagner Group uh, march on Moscow. Now, apparently, they've turned back. But what it shows is that Putin is vulnerable and that there's a chance for the for Russian military forces, security forces, or irregular forces like the Wagner Group to turn against Putin. And Putin has to be fearful about that. And he may want to pull some troops back from Ukraine or some resources back from Ukraine to protect against a future coup. And in that way, it gives Ukraine an advantage. And I'm sure they're going to take advantage of that. Yeah, there's some late breaking developments. Let me just read to you and our folks on the air as they're coming into us now. Reuters reporting that, according to Belarus, uh, there's been a agreement between the Kremlin and Pogosian. Uh, Pogosian will move to Belarus as part of the deal to defuse the, uh, the, the tension as, as well, uh, David Kremlin. The Kremlin claims that criminal case against Prigozhin will be dropped. The mercenaries won't be prosecuted. And those that did not take part in this operation, they will conserve in the Russian military. So what do you think all this was about? I mean, uh, Prigozhin has been critical in demanding that the defense minister, as well as the army chief of staff, be fired. He hasn't been happy with the, with the way the Ukrainian war has been prosecuted. What does all this mean? And then what does that mean for, A, the war in Ukraine, and B, Putin's tenure? There's a lot to unpack here. One thing I would note is that Prigozhin in the last 36 hours said that Russia and the Russian government had lied to the Russian people about the basis for the invasion of Ukraine, that Ukraine and NATO never posed a threat to Russians. He would never said that before. As you mentioned, he'd been critical of the Russian military, but he never said gone that far in basically cr criticizing Putin for ordering the invasion in the first place. I don't know how he completely retracts that and becomes friends and allies with Putin again. Uh, if I were Prigozhin, I would be worried about my life because Putin, uh, he assassinates anyone who challenges him. And Prigozhin has done that. And even if there has been a truce and it's been moderated by Lukashenko, who is a friend of, uh, of, of Putin, who is a leader of a, a authoritarian government in Belarus, that doesn't mean that Prigozhin is going to be protected in the future. And what happens with those 25,000 soldiers, all of whom, or many of whom, apparently were willing to march on Moscow to go against Putin? And what's happening in the rank and file of the Russian army? They learned about this. Many of them, perhaps, were also enthused about the, the potential of getting rid of Putin. Certainly, many of them feel disrespected by the way that Putin and the Russian top brass have organized and managed the war, the number of casualties, the, the number of deaths, as Lucas Tomlinson mentioned earlier, has been so substantial. And, and many probably were not necessary, uh, but the Russian military was so disorganized and mismanaged. And of course, the invasion itself was not necessary. And that goes back to Prigozhin's comments yesterday. In terms of what Prigozhin said, uh, that many agree with, that the invasion is illegal, that Ukraine did not pose any threat to Russia, uh, that NATO did not pose any threat to Russia, that this was all of Vladimir Putin's making. When will the, the balance of that weigh on Vladimir Putin's head and weigh on the Russian people to do something about that dictator? That's right. That's the most important question, because he's the highest level uh, Russian uh, official to say that publicly. And he's a friend of Putin. He's an ally of Putin. And he's powerful because he has the Wagner group. So who else is is going to come out and, and, and talk like that? Or does the fact that Prigozhin reversed mean that the people are going to be quiet for a while? But people are thinking that. People are willing to say that publicly. And then uh, and, and one thing Putin cannot deny is the mounting casualties. The uh, Russian people at home, the families who've lost their sons and their brothers, they know that uh, this war has been a disaster, and that theme must be spreading among 
the Russian people. And so they were probably very confused by what was happening. And some were excited and some were scared. And let's see what the fallout will be over the next few days. And what do you think that fallout potentially can be uh, or, or, or will be? What, what, what will be the result of this strange 36 hours? <sighs> I think one thing is that Putin now has to be more scared that he faces some sort of incursion, a coup in Russia in the future. He has to be worried that he needs to pull back some of his forces. He needs to switch some resources that he's using in Ukraine back to Russia to defend Moscow, to defend his, his authoritarian government. That's one thing that I think is an outcome. The other is, let's see if Ukraine can now make progress on the battlefield, taking advantage of this weakness inside Russia. David Tafuri, thank you for your insight. We'll see what happens in the next few days. Thank you. Thank you. Arthel?